Good afternoon. Sorry, because Pilar. This presentation, the purpose of this presentation is not to show how to configure protocols, but to demonstrate what they serve and where they can be used in real world. My name is Flavio Gomes Figueira Camacho. I am from Brazil. I am an engineer with a master's degree in telecommunication engineering and the engineer responsible for the projects of the telecommunications operator VIPNETS in Brazil. I do nine presentations in nine moon, different moons during the last nine years. I have all of the MicroTIC certifications and I am a trainer from MicroTIC. Presentation from VIPNET. The first thing for someone who would like to open a business is search for an opportunity. I observed that some parts of the city was very bad to access the internet. And I decided to open an internet service provider to people there. Law of supply and demand. There was an internet demand and no one answered it. The company was founded in 2007 for me to meet the demand for data and voice transmission in the region of Baixada Fluminense, no Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. The company was in 2007 authorized by Anatel. Anatel was the government in Brazil to provide multimedia communication service, the same as internet, and phone, telephone. This company was an autonomous system too. The first thing was contracting the first dedicated 412 kbps link with Embratel. To start the activity, the first thing is I buy a link of internet. I would like to sell internet, I need to internet to sell. And the first thing is buy a link. I bought this link with Embratel, the largest company in Brazil. And the link was dedicated with 512 kbps. I had two plans in 2007, one 64 kbps and another with 128 kbps. And I offered only 10% of guarantee Remember, this is the year nine years ago, 11 years ago. At the, in that time, most of the people had at maximum five, 56 kbps using the line phone. My smaller plan was bigger than the internet by phone. The second choice was installation of Linux routers and servers. My other problem was managing the link. Control the speed of customers. Cont block non-pay. Offering services as email. For this, it was necessary the Linux servers and routers. The third part was constructing the first tower at the top of the building to start the activities. The last one was the more difficult because a telecommunication company must need a network to connect his customers. I decided to use the cheaper one, radius with 2.5 gigahertz in that time. We are a wireless internet service provider. And I did a tower with antennas and radios to start the service. The network, the first network, was a bridge with all radios, radios connected to the customers and the link in a gr gr big, big bridge. At the beginning of the network, I had only one tower connected directly to the service, and this one to be link. The network was mounted in bridge, which is the simplest way where all devices are layered to. Easy to configure, easy to work. In the same year, we, const we construction of two new towers, 
leading the internet to places far from the center where there was demand for internet links. First Mikroti course with Maya in Brazil. This here was the first tower in the center of the city. With this tower, I can cover all this area. But for an example, this area here can't be covered because of these mountains here. It was a wireless server, and these mountains can permit my signal to attend these clients here. I decided to do another tower, specifically to this area. I connect my first tower with the second and expand my area of work. One time I understand this technology, I undo the second one to attend another area. And the internet was growing, growing with each, each time more and more area of attendance. This tower was connected with the first one, on where is the link of the internet. The link of the internet was installed here. And I can connect this tower with this here. It gives me a uh, network more resistant to fail. Because if this link had a problem, I can come from here and from here, and these clients here will not be without service. One year after the start of, the, of our operation, we opened a branch in São João de Meriti. It was another city, different from the first one. And in this city, we have an operation completely independent. Another link, another equipment, another service, because the cities was so far one from the other. And in the first years of work, we changed all routers and service for Microtik. We used, I used Linux with CBK control customers in that time. Who works with this knows how bad it is. Microtik is extremely easy to work. Has a graphical interface, we inbox to administrate. Their life was much more easy with Microtik. And I had, at this time, some Cisco holders with serial links, horrible. I changed everything for Microtik. In the same year, we installed we install a provider manager system with radios. It was the end of the Excel. I organized all the, all the clients in an Excel. And it's very cheap because it Excel was a cheaper software, but works well only with few clients. With more than more than a hundred of clients, Excel was impossible to work. And it's necessary a professional system, a professional central administration. Radius provides these things, and a special software developed for a provider is essential to grow. In this, the same year, we install more four towers. We grow faster. Then the network can behave. A telecommunication company has to have design and monitoring. We have discovered this in the worst possible way. The network collapsed in the year of 2008 working extremely poorly. We stopped growing. No new clients because the network was horrible, the service was horrible. We were flooded in trouble. Solution adopted. Structuring the network in layers. A backbone radius and customer service radius. We study the, la the, the layers to uh, organize the network. And I have any layer. It was every single bridge. And in a bridge with 500 people at the same time, the bridge didn't work. Bridge didn't do, wasn't do it to this case. 
We installed two radios with the 5.8 gigahertz radios to increase the network capacity. Radios from Microtik, because they have a managed extremely good. Other radios haven't any options in the menu for organize or, organize or manage the, the, the customers. Other thing what we do in 2008, we install Microtik routers in the towers. The towers only had radios without any router because the network was all un in bridge. We installed Microtik routers in all towers so we could segment the network and halt it. Network halting with static haltings, first time. Connect tower forming alternative paths. And measure the capacity of the network and document it. With this, we start to grow one more time. The, the problems you uh, finish. And in 2009, we installed four new towers. With these no, uh, new towers, we can link the matrix of the company in Duque de Caxias, the city of Duque de Caxias, to the branch in the other city, São João de Meriti. And now, we have two dedicated links on our network. One from Embratel, in Caxias, and another link from another company named uh, Intelig in the city of São João de Meriti. When one internet link crashed, I was able to redirect the client to other link. But because of the routes were static, that was a lot of hard work. The solution for this problem was adopted, implemented as OSPF and present in Moon 2009 in Brazil. This is the network map of the, 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 the VIPnet in 2009. One link from Embratel in the city of Duque de Caxias, 10 towers, and another link from Intelig in São João de Meriti. This green box was routers, has, was the, the towers, the central router of the tower. When I have a client here, he can, from this link, come to the other router and access the internet. But if the links from Embratel had any problem, these clients will be without service. But now I have another link. I can halt this client for other path up to the internet for the other link. These static routes necessary to adapt to this no, don't work well. Static routes does not adapt to change in the network. If a link fails, they keep sending the package to that link. He doesn't adapt looking for an alternative path. And all of the network has only static routings. I have another possibility, but I am not using this possibility when this stops. Because network can't change the routes. I can change manually. I, I must can go into the each router to change this path for this path here. With OSPF, the network is configured by itself. Each router changes information about routers and finds the best route, automatically adapting to changes in topology. No human intervention. If a link stops working, the router will detect and change the router, the route. Redundance with OSPF. I do this presentation in 2009. I talked about the two protocols, RIP and OSPF. I discuss how each one operates, and I present a tutorial on how to implement OSPF in a microtik based network. In VIPnet's case, why I use OSPF? I use OSPF to redirect routes automatically 
in case of problems in one of the, uh, in one of the towers or links. How to configure? We have lots of presentations here in different moons from different peoples showing you how to configure it. VIPNET 2010. The new structure, structure was very robust and we grew again. The quality of service improved absurdly, which put us in a new level where we were referred by the quality and availability of our service. We started selling dedicated links to companies that were looking for a different service. These companies wanted to a public and fixed IP, which was a problem when redirecting the link. Let's go. If I had a client here, and he was come to Embratel, who was the nearest path, I will give to this client an IP fix from the link the Embratel. Embratel give me a link and give me some IPs. Intelig give me a link and some IPs, but IPs from Embratel was from Embratel. From Intelig works only in Intelig networks. And if this client here, if I give him a, a link, uh, an IP from Embratel, he was come here, here, okay, he was access the internet, and he has a IP public and fixed. Internet can access the client too. If Embratel fails, I can't go with him to Intelig. If I route him to Intelig, he will access the internet, but internet will not access this client because the IP was from Embratel and he was coming for another network, for the network of Intelig. For private clients, for, for customers who use IPs, uh, private IPs, it wasn't a problem because we can do a NAT masquerade and any link was okay. But for, a, for someone who uses IP dedicated, dedicated IP, this redundance didn't work well. It was a problem. I saw Maya's presentation about BGP in the moon of 2010 in Brazil and did the course and certification MTCRE and MTCINE with it in the post moon. Go to moon. Everybody here was in the local, cor the correct local. In the moon, I knew that there was a solution to my problem and I was, and it was the BGP. For this reason, Moon is important. It's a place to exchange experience and knowledge. Do training. I did a training with Maya to learn how the protocol works and how to configure it. The official trainers, or any trainer, was important to understand more uh, deep the problem, the solution. And in 2011, now I have an IS, autonomous system. Now I, how, I, I know how to configure it. And I solve the problem of the public IP. I start to provide for clients VPNet IP. When I had a problem with their carrier, it was just redirecting to the other one with no change of address or not. Now we have the same picture, but VIPNet now was an IS. And the client here receives a public IP from VIPNet. The IP wasn't from Embratel or Intelig. The IP was from VIPNet and can work in any one of the links. Why I use BGP? to allow public IP redirection by another carrier. To provide to customers with a dedicated fixed and public IPs and to remove NAT and masquerade from the network. And here is some presentations who shows how to configure BGP to study more. Another interesting one was the ECMP. 
To ensure the availability of the network, we began to duplicate the links. And that was when we started to use ECMP. This protocol can also balance the network across multiple non-bounded links. Let me see. We have two different gateways for one network. <laughs> Look here. If this client here, this tower here, can come to internet from one, two, three, from this path, and he can access the internet. He has another possibility, one, two, three, another path to the internet. The best will be if this one can use these two towers at the same time. And ECMP do exactly that. Why you use XMP? To increase the efficiency, the network, and the available bandwidth. At the same time, as I have redundancy, redundancy with this link, I have this link, more this link. I can use these two at the same time. More bandwidth used. And extremely easy to configure. It. In 2012, that, that's the network, the network was growing, 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 and we have another new situation, one situation like this. What is it? Here I have a tower, and here another tower. Clients and more and more and more clients here. This link haven't bandwidth. I need more band to put more clients here. And I put, do a second wireless link between this tower and this tower. When I do this, I have two wireless interfaces connected to the same router and connected to the same tower. It was the moment to use the bounding. Why use bounding? Bounding is to aggregate the band of two links by doubling the ca transport capacity and creating a failover system. At the same time, if, th if this link passes one giga, this one giga, I will have two gigabytes of transport here. And if one radio do have any problem, my service didn't stop. It only reduced the velocity, the, the, the band, but it not stop. It gives failover system and double the transport, transport capacity. How to configure? It's another moon here with a tutorial. In 2009, we have 10 towers, and we work in two cities. Three years later, we have 26 towers, and we work in eight cities. This is the, a map of the network in 2009, and this is a map of the network in 2012. This is a dudes map, and this is a, a map from Google Maps, looking the exact position of each tower. Evolution from 2009 to time 12. In 2009, 34 active network devices. In 2010 pops, two cities. Three years later, 194 monitored active devices, 26 pops, and eight cities. We grow 570% in three years in network devices. The network was more and more complex new protocols, new solutions was, was necessary to grow the network. More pops and more cities. In cities, 400%. Reason to growth. Observe how the greats of the markets work and follow their examples. Qualify yourself always and seek new solutions. If the company does not grow, it will go to bankruptcy. 
the market is not stopped. Quality is one of the basic prerequisites. We have to different. Quality is one of the basic prerequisites. We have to differentiate ourselves by the quality of the service provided. In this point of the network, I have a client, a big client. And the matrix of this client was here. This city was Nova Iguaçu, one city in Brazil. Here, this client has a branch, another city. And this client would like a LAN to LAN, a connection in layer 2, connecting the matrix and the branch. Also, uh, also a transparent bridge, a tunnel layer 2. We have, I have lots of possibilities to give this service for the client. Use bridging using WDS, bridge using an EOP, EOP or bridge using MPLS with VPLS. The MPLS VPLS approach has some advantage from the others solutions. VPLS tunnel has about 60% faster and less overhead than LOIP tunnel. And the protocol 802.11n speed is limited over WDS bridge. VPLS doesn't have such limitations. Why use MPLS? To increase network performance and to implement transparent bridge and the tunnel layer 2 and sell one more service and win more money with the same network. How to configure? Lots of different presentations about it. This is the last year, 2017. And this is the area of the network. In last year, we have 118 pops. We attend uh, 17 cities. Looks for the crew. More than 1,000 of active devices. More than 100 pops in 17 cities. Without a protocol like OSPF to do routes, it was impossible to manage one network with, two, with 30 for devices was possible. Bad was possible. With 100 was impossible. And this is the part of Brazil and where we, we are. Only to compare it, Great Rio, where we are, there is the, 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 the area where, where we work, have two 12 million habitants and 6,000 the from area. London has 8,000, 8 million inhabitants and 1,000 from area. The area of this company was six times bigger than the Great London and has 50% more people than the Great London. Here I do a lot of presentations interesting who will show how to configure these protocols. And the importance of the moon for no new things and the training to understand better how to operate the protocols. Mais um Flávio Camacho and thank you. Thank you. Do we have any uh, and sorry for the English. It's all, good. It's all fine. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank you. That was a fascinating presentation. Um, how did you migrate from a layer two bridge network to a switched routed network to a routed network without bringing all your customers offline whilst you whilst you did it? Planning. Planning a lot. 
lots of weeks planning, doing labs to halting the, the network without stopping the network. It was a big problem. You, you understand? It, I, I've done it. I'm yes, it's painful. It's, it's a, a big problem because the network was working. Everybody was in bridge. Change bridge to halting stops everything. How to work without, without stop? It was very difficult, but it was possible. We can do it, but a lot of labs, a lot of, uh, of, of study, but it was possible. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Flavio.